Uh, hackers and general hackers, please put your hands together for Husky Sings and the 64-bit band. Just hear that end map jingling, ring ting tingling too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a port scan together with you. We'll use that scan utility to figure out what to do. Come on, it's lovely weather for a port scan together with you. A pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, hey y'all, let's look at them all. We're enumerating ports and protocols. A hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, that scan, oh isn't it grand? We're scanning along to the song of a hackery fairyland. Enumerating targets for open ports are we. Use our default scripts and version fingerprinting and map dash SCSV ports 80 and 22. Come on, it's lovely weather for a port scan together with you. Skizzy Bully Bass on the trumpet, everybody. Skizzy! Good evening, hackers and gentle hackers. I hope we're all warm and cozy in here tonight as we're going to learn how to scan and enumerate. I'm Husky Sings. We are the 64-bit band. Thank you to Try Hack Me for having us back this year. Now everyone sit back, relax, and enjoy the scan. A pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Hey, y'all, let's look at them all. We're enumerating ports and protocols. A hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up, now scan, oh isn't it grand? We're scanning along to the song of a hackery fairyland, enumerating targets for open ports are we. We'll use our default scripts and version fingerprinting, and map dash SCSV ports 80 and 22. Come on, it's lovely weather for a port scan together with you. A port scan together with you. A port scan together with you. Let's take it home. A port scan together with you. Hey everybody, welcome to Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber Day 4, Scanning Through the Snow. My name is Husky Hacks, and thank you to Husky Sings for that performance. That was really something. But we're going to go ahead and get started on this day. We're going to jump right into it. So go ahead, 3, 2, 1, OBS transition. Woo! Go ahead and start up your attack box and find Day 4, Scanning Through the Snow, and let's get into it. As hackers... We are merchants of information. We are brokers of info. That's the currency of what we do. And the more information that we can find, the better off we're going to be as hackers. And so scanning is one way that we pick up information about the computers that we're trying to hack into. Now, if you think about computers, Computers were made to talk to each other. Computer A has some information that computer B needs, or maybe somebody on computer A has some information that they need to send to computer B, the person there. So the way that computers communicate with each other is all about network traffic and ports and protocols. Now, a protocol, just as if a human would have a protocol for meeting somebody, let's say that I say, hey, uh, it's nice to meet you, and I extend my hand, and then the other person says, oh, it's nice to meet you as well, they extend their hand, and we handshake, that's kind of like a human communication protocol, right? It's a, it's a kind of a pattern of communication in which we have established that to be able to talk to each other and send messages. So computers have that too. The data format 
in these protocols is how data is packaged up and sent to the other computer. And so what we're going to do in this room is look at other computers on the network, in this case, just our target uh, host here, and we're going to try to communicate with them in such a way to say, hey, are you alive? And if so, can I talk to you? And if so, what kind of data do you want me to send you? And that's what we're going to be doing with Nmap and port scanning. So you can go ahead and read through the information here. This is lots of good background about what ports and protocols are and how they function. But let's get right into the technical work here. Over on the attack box, what I want you to do is right click on the desktop here and you're going to go right down here to open in terminal. A nice little terminal window is going to pop up here. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger uh, so everybody can see a little bit easier. Now, one of the first things that we can do here is use the nmap help menu so just go ahead and type in nmap and hit enter and there's going to be a whole lot of information here this is a general convention with tools this is called the usage statement so if you ever need to know how to use a tool go ahead and just either try to type in the tool name itself or maybe um if we go back here and do a dash h like that that's going to be the help menu it should be usually the same thing the help menu just might be a little there might be a little bit more output but in any case, this is going to show you how to use Nmap. Nmap is a very complicated tool. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. We're going to use it pretty uh, more on the basic level here, but you can just look, there's tons of different stuff that you can give Nmap. But by default, Nmap's gonna be pretty savvy. It's gonna know kind of what to do even with fewer arguments. Now arguments are uh, the thing that's going to come after the tool name Nmap. So if I do a dash H for help, that's an argument to say, hey, I want to see the help menu for Nmap. But the first argument that we're going to give it is dash lowercase s, uppercase s. This is called a sin scan. In the TCP handshake, there is the sin, sin ac, ac, three-way handshake. What we're going to do is use the first part of that, the sin part, to do the port scanning here. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Uh, there's a little bit more technical stuff going on under the hood. They call this the stealth scan. By today's standards, it's not very stealthy. But what we're going to do is type in the IP address of the host that we're going after. For me, that is 10.10.103.165, but for you, that may be something different. So what we're saying is, hey, Nmap, can you go ahead and do a SYN scan, a stealth scan against this target? Whoops, against this target right here. So Nmap, please do a SYN stealth scan against this target, and we can hit enter. Now, this should come back pretty quickly. There it is. Now, there's a good amount of information here. Now, let's see if we can just start to unravel and see what this information is trying to tell us. Everything that I'm highlighting right now is the information that we really care about. And these columns here will tell you exactly what is uh, in this information. The first column here is the port column. Now remember, the ports are the open ears of a computer that are in a listening state ready for data to come in. The next is the state column. Nmap by default will show you open ports and ports that are filtered. If it's open, it's just like it sounds. It's ready to receive connections. If it's filtered, it might be open, but it ain't open to you. And there's more that we can get into about that. But just for now, think filtered means firewall. All right, filtered means firewall. The last one here is also an interesting column of information to look at. This is the service. Now, by default, Nmap understands that some ports are usually assigned to some things. A very good example of this is this one right here. Port 80 conventionally is assigned to HTTP. If you've ever been on a website, you're probably familiar with HTTP, the unencrypted plain text hypertext transfer protocol. And then there is the secure version of this as well, HTTPS. But right now we're dealing with HTTP. It looks like we have an open web server running on port 80. But I wanna point something out here. Just because a service is running on port 80 does not mean that it's actually a web server. There is nothing actually holding you to keeping your web server on port 80. In fact, I could put a web server on port 108. I could put a web server on port 22 if I wanted to. I can put a web server on basically any port that I want. Why? Because a port is really just a number. It's like a designator. It means that usually this is going to be a web server if it's port 80, but there's nothing 
forcing you to put your web server on port 80. By convention, we have it on port 80. Now, the other ports that are open here are also kind of interesting. So port 22, and this is just from experience. Uh, again, there's nothing uh, forcing these ports to be this way, but just from experience and, and understanding kind of uh, different ports and what they mean. Port 22 is Secure Shell. Secure Shell is a way to start a, a session on another host. Uh, so it's very uh, useful for using a remote connection to go into another server and do, you know, whatever you want to do, just as if you were sitting right there. And then these last two are also very interesting. So these two ports usually mean that there's some kind of file sharing going on, and primarily that's this one right here, 445. This is for uh, file sharing. Now there are a few other types of scans that we can do. We can do something like a ping scan, so we can do a, I'll clear the terminal here, nmap dash lowercase sn, and then the same uh, IP address that I just did, 10.10.103.165. And what this is going to do is just ping. So we're not looking at ports at this point, we're just sending a ping. So just as if we did the ping uh, count 1, 10, 10, 103, 165, just as if we were doing this and sending a single ping packet and saying, hey, are you alive? And if the host is alive, it responds to us. Uh, we're going to use Nmap to do that as well. Now, for a single host, this might not be very useful, but think if you're on a, a network of, you know, 200 plus hosts or 2,000 plus hosts or 200,000 plus hosts, uh, maybe a big ping sweep to go out and look for all of the different hosts on the network might be pretty beneficial to you. So we have identified a few different ports here, so I think we can start to answer some of these questions. What is the name of the HTTP server running on the remote host? Well, actually, we don't know the answer to that now, but what I can do is issue the dash SV for version enumeration. Uh, and that is Nmap's best guess at what the actual technology behind this port is actually uh, running. So 10.10.103.165. So with a version scan, we should get a little bit more information coming back about this host. And there we go. It looks like we've got, now there's a lot more output, but again, I'll highlight the things that are interesting here. Now we have the port, state, and service again, but we also have the version column now. And this is Nmap's best guess at figuring out what is actually running at that service. So it, it uh, looks at the port and it sends it a few more packets of information and it says, oh, you know, this really looks like OpenSSH or this really looks like Apache. And so that is what we see here. On port 80, we have an open HTTP port and the version information, it looks like it's running the Apache HTTP daemon. Uh, we get a version number as well and a possible uh, operating system here, Ubuntu. And so this is interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Apache for our first uh, answer there, and that is correct. Uh, what is the name of the service running on port 22? Well, port 22, we see right here, port 22 TCP in an open state is SSH, secure shell. We already went over that. We type in SSH and we uh, get that answer as well. Now, what flag can you find after successfully accessing the Samba server? So Samba. Now, unlike Samba the dance, in which we will be sharing our truest selves uh, on a beach in Rio de Janeiro somewhere, no, the Samba service is actually that file sharing that we were talking about earlier. Now, how would we access the file share? Well, it looks like we already have some credentials to be able to do this. And so I'm going to go ahead and take this right here, SMB and the IP address, and I'm going to go up to my file system. So really any like places right here, and you can go to the home folder. Now, if you type into this location field right here, if you give it the port and protocol, so smb colon slash slash and the ip address which is 10 10 103 well it will use that information to reach out and look at the file sharing service that's located on this remote host and it says oh hey i have three things for you admin s print dollar sign and samba share now according to the storytelling here we actually have uh, some credentials to be able to use to get into the administrative uh, share here. Uh, so what I want to do over here is go to the registered user uh, radio button right here. And for the username, we'll type in Ubuntu. We're going to leave the domain as a work group, which is the standard default value if something is not domain joined. So go ahead and just don't touch that one, leave that one alone. And we're going to do s at sign nta 2022. And if our open source intelligence is correct, we should be able to connect into the share and see what is on this file share. And indeed we do. And so we have the flag right here. We can open up the flag, THM Santa SMB server. You can go ahead and type that one in. 
And then the last question here is what is the password for the uh, username Santa HR? And we see we have a user list.txt. This is incredibly common. Now, this is, of course, a little bit of a, you know, it's a, it's a CTF. It's a little contrived. But I want to underscore the realism here. When you access file shares uh, as a user, you may be surprised what you see. And a lot of the time, there are username lists, there are CSVs with passwords in them, there are all kinds of goodies that you'll find as a hacker. Uh, so I did want to just point that out, that um, yeah, this is pretty a little more realistic than you'd probably think. But in any case, we have the Santa HR user, and we have Santa25 as the password. So we type that in, and there we go. And just for good measure, let's go ahead and throw the flag in here as well. And that is curly brackets, THM, Santa, SMB, server. And there we go. Well, that's it. That's a pretty fast room, but we did learn a lot. We learned a little bit about how uh, computers talk to each other. We learned a little bit about ports and protocols. We learned a little bit about how we can enumerate and collect information on those ports and protocols and what kind of advantage that might give us as a hacker. Uh, my friends, have a great one. That's it for day four. And stay tuned because you might see me coming up again in a few days here. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But everybody, take care of yourselves. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I will see you when I see you. See ya!